Warning! This video contains cartoonish depictions of death and gore. There's also a good amount of swearing from my boy Padre. Therefore, this video is not intended for younger audiences. If you were under the age of 13, this video is not made for you, and you should not be watching it. Leave now if you're below that age. Enjoy. Well now, it's been a long while since I did one of these top five thingies, so I thought, why not do another one, but with a completely different take and topic? So I had to fish through a lot of ideas, a lot of them being FNAF topics, and finally came up with something that I don't believe has been done before when it comes to these list videos. And yes, I'm, I'm still sick, I'm still getting over a cold, so please excuse my congested voice, I'm trying to sound as, as deep and baritone as possible, but the, the congestion is coming through. Indie horror games. They're a staple of the gaming community and have been around for years. Indie games are usually smaller scale games that are made by one person or a very small group of people. You've got games like Slender, FNAF, and more. FNAF, for example, was made by one guy, Scott Coffin. Alright, so what's the topic of this list, do you ask? Well, Dave Microwaves Games. You guys may know him, you may not. He's a smaller indie developer that has been making first-person horror games since 2017, 2018, I'm not completely sure when he started, but since then he's grown quite significantly, with his newer games receiving a ton of praise, and currently in the works around the clock at Bikini Bottom is gaining some pretty major hype, and the small bits of gameplay people got to see with the private YouTuber demo released earlier this year got people even more excited. Dave's games are so well received because he's got a very unique style of gameplay along with a unique and recognizable art style that sticks out compared to other indie horror games. The art style of his games is what drew me originally and I've been hooked ever since. I sadly couldn't enjoy the games to their fullest at first since my computer had a stroke whenever I tried to run them, but ever since I got a better computer, his games run smooth as butter and I can fully enjoy the experience. So on to the meat and potatoes of this video. This is the top five Dave Microwave games. But since this is a pretty hefty topic compared to other things I've done these list videos on, I thought for the first time ever, I'd have a guest come on here and help me out with this. That guest is none other than Padre Snowmizzle, a good friend of Dave's who helps out with animations, artwork, voices, and more for Dave's games. Padre kindly agreed to collaborate with me on this, and he actually will be doing the narration on a few of these entries. So everyone give him a warm welcome and be be sure to check out his channel and stuff when you get the chance. Before we dive into this list, I'd like to make it clear that the games on this list are my opinion and Padre's opinion. If you guys don't agree with how we rank these games, that is completely okay and it's fine to disagree. Let us know in the comments what your favorite Dave Microwave game is and where you'd rank it on your own list. Also, Dave's birthday is coming up, so happy early birthday, Dave. Now, without further ado, let's get into this. Take it away, Padre. Number 5. Got a fear of things that move when they aren't supposed to move? More specifically, a cute little plush of a... I don't know, an Enderman or a cute little doggo? The welcome to the club of Aquatophobiacs. Now why would I bring up such a fancy schmancy word? <laughs> well, I totally knew I, what the word was off the top of my head, and I certainly didn't go look it up to sound smart. Any <laughs> Anyways, out of all the games, of Dave's to kick off this list here, we felt it would be most appropriate to start off with an original title like Shopping Nightmare. Aside from having the best starting beats in the Dave Microwaves game, seriously, I get soy to this shit. This game brought about the legendary meme, the guy who'll never see the light of day in another Dave Microwaves games as a full-on character, Barry the Bear. Hold on, I'm, I'm, hold on, I'm getting ahead of myself though. Let's, let's take a few steps back and go over the logistics of Shopping Nightmare. You start off, and I shit you not, in the shitter. Our protagonist just finished unleashing their load of shit and realizes that it's way beyond open hours. The player is tasked with finding the means to releasing the lock mechanisms on the sliding doors at the front of the store and escape with their lives. You know, pretty standard fare for a Dave Microwaves game if you ask me. The goon squad that's looking to bop you consists of a night guard, a robotic television for whatever reason, and the big bear himself. A few fun facts as well. The whole game is a dream Dave had one night. The night guard was originally Jason, but Dave tossed the mask aside for a normal night guard appearance. Barry, on the other hand, doesn't stem from Dave's dreams. Instead, he's inspired by the big purple gorilla within the toy store in a PS1 Rugrats game. As for the TV, if I recall, he was made last minute just to fill in the diversity shoes, I guess. Anyway. Why this game is ranked so low is because while yes, this is a remaster and there were some improvements done here and there to enhance the original game, 
It still retains a lot of old Dave Michael Waves tropes, one of which is a lack of unique enemy designs and how they were introduced through build-up. The only redeeming qualifier that contradicts this notion is Barry. Bud and I both agree that the sequence of entering the Barry plush storage room was indeed a heart-stopping moment for many after picking up the appropriate item. We all have our first special moment with Barry the Bear, and it's part of why we love that big old goofy idiot. Number 4 Oh god, this freaking game. Okay, so I love Outlast. It's one of, if not my favorite horror game of all time, alongside Amnesia, The Dark Descent, and Fid <laughs> Yeah, no. Anyways, this Dave game is just... Uh, I have such a love-hate relationship with this game. We're talking about Whales for Freedom, one of Dave's somewhat older entries, but it was made kind of new again when that horrifying Barney mode was added in. Childhoods all across the world are now ruined because of that. Thank you, Dave. Very cool. So, you might be asking why this game is on the list if you hate it. Well, as much as I hate it, I love it to death, too. I mentioned Outlast earlier, right? This game is directly inspired off Outlast. Dave himself confirmed it was, and the night vision mechanic in it is just like the night vision in Outlast. A game inspired off my favorite horror game of all time? Yeah, sign me up. It's just... Oh, dear lord, the controls. The control! Whales for Freedom has one of the most difficult set of controls in any Dave game ever made. But it works. Instead of being able to move around freely, you're confined to a wheelchair because you soon find out after waking up in some sort of mental asylum cell that your leg has been violently chopped off by... something. You never find out what did it either. You'd assume it was the horrifying ghosts that are roaming the halls. Or Barney. God, don't even get me started on that Barney mode. Up, oh, too late, I'm started. The premise of this game seems pretty simple. You wake up, get in your wheelchair, and find out that you have to collect fuses to turn the power back on, and then find a key to unlock the door that leads to the fuse box. Once you get all the fuses and turn the power back on, you're free to escape. What makes this game so great and so frustrating at the same time is being confined to that wheelchair. Your freedom of movement is severely limited, so when a ghost spots you, you can't just turn around and run away. You have to get your wheelchair turned around and fast and furious your way down the hall. And if you run into a dead end, well, goodbye. My praises for this game definitely outweigh my complaints, but good lord do I hate the AI. The ghosts and... Barney. Barney! I just love to camp out around the areas that key items are located. Seriously, every time I see a fuse or the key, a ghost is just always there waiting for me. And most of the time, I don't have time to get my wheelchair turned around quick enough, so it's like, well, I guess I better accept my fate. Seriously, ghost, you're a dead, wandering spirit. Isn't there something better you can do, like maybe haunt a different area of the asylum? Like, why this specific spot? Come on, ghost, go do something productive. Oh yeah, I can't forget forget about the recent Barney mode that was added to this. It's the same game, except everything is purple, and Barney is the main antagonist instead of ghosts. Why is Barney there in a random abandoned asylum? I have no freaking idea, but he's there, and he doesn't love you in this game at all. He does love to feast on your flesh, though. Oh, and did I mention that he's, like, really silent? He loves to just come around the corner and give you a heart attack before biting your head off. It's very fun. So yeah, we're also freedom. If you're looking for a challenging Dave game and like to get mad, this one's for you. You can find it in the description if you'd like to try it out for yourself. Don't say I didn't warn you if it leaves you wanting to put a hole through your computer screen, though. Number three. With around the clock at Bikini Bottom in development by your boys, Dave Microwaves and yours truly, I feel it'd be most appropriate for me to elaborate on 6 a.m. at the Chum Bucket one-third of the small-time Spongebob parody trilogy, which also features 3 a.m. at the Krusty Krab and 3.30 a.m. at Floater Cemetery. You hungry fucking hippos out there are probably bringing your pitchforks and torches to my doorstep as I talk about 6 a.m. and not the other two. You'll be even more pissed to know that this is the only parody game on the entire list. Why is 6 a.m. on here and not the others? Why is this the only parody game? Why? 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 Well, I'll tell you why, you little shits. Uh, pardon my French. I don't fucking like most parody games. Well, let me rephrase that. I don't like parody games that use already existing plots and rehashes them, or worse, yeah, it gives them a fresh coat of paint with a plot that attempts to reuse a lot of elements of the source material or replaces assets with their own designs or reskins. It feels lazy and rushed to snag trends. 
If you enjoy it, that's totally cool. You do you. It just isn't my cup of tea to feel a restriction on creativity from certain gameplay guidelines and communities, for that matter. Now, with this in mind, what makes 6 a.m. at the Chum Bucket different from 3 a.m. at the Krusty Krab or 3.30 a.m. at Florida Cemetery? Well, yes, it reuses already existing characters and locations, and sure, the writing is subpar because Dave's writing skills can lack at certain times. No offense, Dave. I love you, my bud. At the very least, it has some noteworthy references, and in the original story provided how short the game is. The gameplay is, once again, standard fair Dave logic. You get stuck in the Chum Bucket. You find things are screwy around these parts, and when you book it, you find that the only way out is on lockdown. You go through the trouble of evading various foes you come across, head into the basement, which I'm noticing that's also a pattern in a lot of Dave's old work for his small-time games, and you barely escape with your life intact. Now what's so different about this little game compared to Shopping Nightmare in regards to the gameplay? Well, that'd be the enemies. At this point in Dave's growth as a developer, more ideas came about for how enemies would deal with you. Unlike the simplicity of, oh, I see, I chase, I kill. You have foes like Karen, who randomly appears through trap doors, and Spongebot, who confused the hell out of everyone because most people didn't bother to note the pools of oil. The Trump Monster is an exception to this expansion, but I appreciate the decent variety. Additionally, this game has probably the best set of random events for any one of these Spongebob uh, games, I'd say. It is being kind of tossed around if there would be more uh, random events added to these games later on at some point or another, but I highly doubt it. You never know. You never know. Number two. Space! The endless void of space provides so much entertainment for movies like Star Wars, Star Trek, Marvel movies, video games, and more. Space is, as we all know, endless. Infinite. So that leaves us with infinite possibilities for things to make about space. Well, Dave decided to come in here and make a huge game that takes place on a giant spaceship where huge, ugly monsters are chasing you around. Lovely. Strange Terror from Beyond the Stars. A mouthful of a title, but it's also a mouthful of content. This game is huge, consisting of like seven different endings, a ton of monsters, and multiple routes you can take to get specific endings. Oh, and there's one particular ending where the game Salmon gets brutally murdered, but there's also an ending where he doesn't. So, there's some player variety there. You can be a terrible person and let Sam get eaten, or you can be a brave soul and save him, only for him to end up getting trapped again in the game sequel. But don't worry, Padre's got that covered. Sam, please don't get yourself killed. Thanks. <laughs> this game's story is a little more detailed compared to the other games of Dave's roster. You play as a crew member of the SS Strange Terror, nice one there, Dave, and your ship is stranded and a ghoul from outer space has boarded your ship and is roaming around. It's your job to either find a way to kill this monster or get your crew to safety by means of fixing the ship, sending out a distress signal, blowing everything up, or being a selfish, heartless douche by stealing an escape pod and leaving everyone else to die. Really nice there, protagonist. That's the definition of being a good Samaritan right there. At the very least, you're not confined to a wheelchair this time, and you can move around freely. However, the spaceship you're on is very huge, with many rooms leading to dead ends, and the monster somehow just knows where you are a lot of the time and loves to corner you. Occasionally, you'll run into a pretty rare monster, such as Barry the Bear from Shopping Nightmare, even Dave Microwave himself, or Jason X. Uh, well, I'm a pretty big Friday the 13th fan, so I'll take it. Plus, it's the perfect setting since the Jason X movie takes place on a spaceship. Back in May of this year, Dave went in and added a mode where you activate all of the monsters at once, including the rare ones. Yes, it's as chaotic as it sounds. I made an entire video on it. This game is a must-play if you're a Dave fan and you like space things. It has a huge Star Trek feel to it, and the main theme of the game is black and white, so it really gives you that early 60s alien space adventure feel. It's quite charming. You can find the link to Strange Terror from Beyond the Stars in the description. They've got one more entry. You have the floor, Mr. Snowmizzle. Number one. If there were ever a game to be deemed the most overlooked and possibly the most controversial out of all Dave's work as to date, this game would probably sit comfortably on the throne for now. This is Strange Terror from the Deep, the most expansive game made by Dave, you know, aside from around the clock. Anyways, we're gonna go straight into what makes this marginally better than Strange Terror from Beyond the Stars. You've got plenty of endings, nine to be exact, 25 monsters to encounter at least, two playable characters, and the story that I lent a hand in developing post-initial release, and some DLC figuring my big old barnacle-ridden orca, Barney Barnacle. I won't spoil the story for you because I do encourage that you purchase the game and give it a fair shot to learn for yourself. 
Or watch me and Bud scream our heads off, that works too. The gist of this game is that Jay is boarded the submarine after the events of Strange Hair from Beyond the Stars took place. His crewmates were tasked by their organization to deliver XYZ monster to an unknown client. Unsurprisingly enough, the monster escapes and goes on a joyous walk in the park, frolicking through the flowers, singing with the cute little birdies, having a nice little picnic. <laughs> nah, I'm only kidding, everyone fucking died. You're given the opportunity to play as Jay, the returning character, or Alice, the new playable gal. Each comes with their own quirks that can benefit them during certain scenarios. You're given the option to murder everything you see, be a traitor and leave your remaining crewmates for death, either prolonged or immediate, die embarrassingly, or kill the threat roaming the ship. When I say there are a lot of baddies, I mean there are a lot of members of the goon squad. They come packing with their own abilities and speeds, along with a metric shit ton of VAs compared to the previous installment in the series, myself included, along with Bud. I voice Gargantuan Shrimp and Barney Barnacle in case any of you were curious. Speaking of Barney, not to toot my horn with me designing a lot from this guy, you know, from the concept, the audio, to mechanics, I do want to give Dave a round of applause for Barney, because he suffered to get through his uh, programming. It was probably like one of his more difficult AI to program. Certain abilities had to be sacrificed, but in the end, I think it kind of paid off. He's probably going to be one of the ones we rework a little bit. Um, for the update that's gonna be coming, like, probably, like, 2020, I'd say. Before Around the Clock, he was the most advanced enemy out of any brain-dead enemy Dave made at the time, so my best regards for the bullshit he had to endure in finalizing his AI. Now, I did mention that there was some controversy in regards to the three bucks it costs to purchase this experience, with certain kiddos and YouTubers claiming it isn't worth the three bucks. I can partially see the argument there. As part of my style of critique, I've made it clear to Dave that the game does suffer from realizing that the AI isn't much of a threat upon discovering their predetermined patrol routes and commonplace stupidity in some cases. Not to mention that the scenery of the sub can get very old very quickly. Some have complained about hardcore mode being too difficult. Some have complained about not getting that super rare monster in the Beyond the Stars-esque game mode. And some have even complained that custom mode, which was my idea to help out YouTubers like Bud, Davey, and Sam with their content and freely explore the capabilities of various enemies, that the rare monsters were spoiled. Ooh, give me a break, please. It mostly comes down to people being salty that someone has to become an adult and pay for living conditions, as life typically happens, to ask of you. I don't think having to pay to live in a home should cause players to turn away from a game so quickly. Strange Terror from Beyond the Stars was well received, and it was free. Now all of a sudden, you slap a hefty three bucks on, and it's the end of the world! Well, you know what? For what it's worth, the three bucks may be a bit much. But at the very least, you should try to catch this on a sale if three bucks is too heavy of a load to throw at Dave. Dave has a certain low-poly cartoon style. You, you can't diss a man for simply expressing themselves through their work. I get it, as someone with a degree, I can understand that harsh feedback's the standard motivator at times in order to improve oneself. However, I will say that you shouldn't take it as an opportunity to sprout negativity if you aren't going to be constructive. And no, construction doesn't consist of wanting to improve on the original format that someone else had the right to unless they said it's okay. Especially if the source material is paid. Phone, shut up! I'm not naming anyone! But it's a good life lesson on creative freedom versus creative limitational imitation. That was a fucking mouthful. Long story short, and apologies for anyone who just wanted to hear Bug give his goodbyes for this video now, if uh, anyone was going to have the goal to express these controversial opinions with a brutally honest yet chill tone, it would be yours truly. I'd like to thank you, Bud, for allowing me to pop into your channel for this top five. I'm sure when Dave watches this, he'd feel completely honored. It's funny, actually. I spoke with him a long while ago about no one making any sort of countdown for his games, yet here we are. While I'm at it, I'd like to thank all of you who watched this so far. I mean, for you guys, that's a definite given. Can't wait to begin making my first game for y'all to enjoy. Hopefully. Lastly, I do want to thank Dave again for, you know, working with me, letting me work with him, letting me, like, basically be, like, the creative director for, I guess, like, Around the Clock and some other, like, future games and all that. I mean, it's, I mean, it feels like an honor, you know? And the funny thing is, he's, like, younger than me. It's just, like, sorry if I'm, like, like babbling on. It's just really bizarre to think that, like, People are getting younger and younger when they start, like, game developing and all. It may not always be good, but it shows, like, intuitiveness. Intuitiveness? Did I say that right? Intuition. That's... I did intuition. But yeah, enough, enough babbling. Take it from here, bud. Thank y'all for watching. Hope you're all having a lovely day. <laughs> Woo! 
Well, there you have it. The top five Dave Microwave games, according to us. I want to give a huge thank you to Padre for teaming up with me on this video. This was an absolute blast to put together. I'm writing this part of the script after editing everything else, so I can confirm that this was a joy to make. Like I said in the intro, be sure to go check out his channel and other social medias. Link to those will be in the description. We hope you enjoyed our rankings, and be sure to tell us in the comments what you agreed and disagreed with. Leave a like if you enjoyed, or a dislike if you didn't enjoy it. We're both very much looking forward to seeing everyone's reactions to this. We truly hope you enjoyed yourselves. Thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you enjoyed, and you can find more videos like this in the description and the end cards. See you all later, guys. Peace out.